Branding and marketing are really important for establishing a unique identity and attracting clients and connecting with your ideal audience. Welcome to Open Studio Podcast, a space for lettering artists, illustrators, and creatives who are determined to thrive in their passion. I'm Martina Flora, and I've been through the ups and downs of building a successful creative business. From struggling to make ends meet to achieving my dream of becoming an award-winning lettering designer, I've learned valuable lessons along the way. Now, I'm here to share those lessons, strategies, and tips so that your journey can be smoother. Whether you're looking to turn your passion into a career or want insights to boost your creative business, this podcast is your guide. Join me on the Open Studio Podcast and let's make your creative dreams a reality. Hello, 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 and welcome back to Open Studio. I'm your host, Martina Flor, and today we are continuing with this special series of episodes in which I answer the most frequently asked questions around how to build a career as a lettering artist, as a graphic artist. We answer questions around how to get started to learn and master a craft. What are the tools that you need? How do you find your first clients and uh, generate income with what you do? And how do you market yourself? So before we dive into today's question, I want to remind you that all of these questions, all of these episodes will uh, are compiled in a guide that I have prepared for you that you can download for free on martinaflor.com forward slash guide. Let me say it again, martinaflor.com forward slash guide. You can go ahead and download the series of questions that we are answering in these episodes. You can have it all at once in one place. And this is why I prepared this guide, which you can download on martinaflor.com slash guide. So today's question is, what is the importance of branding and marketing for a lettering artist or graphic artist? Now, Branding and marketing are really important for establishing a unique identity and attracting clients and connecting with your ideal audience. So you will want to develop a personal brand that reflects your style and values. And it's gonna be based on a myriad of stuff. It's not gonna be based solely on your style. It's also gonna be based on your story as an artist and who you are and what your values are and what you stand for. So in order to build a presence and a branding, you can use all the tools available for you nowadays. And what is great about this specific moment in time in which we are living is that all of the tools to market ourselves are available for us, right? No one owns, well, of course, some people own these platforms, but at the same time, we can access them. And in the past, the, you know, the access to market yourself and to show yourself in front of an audience was in the hands of magazines or newspapers or TV shows, right? Nowadays, you can open a social media account and you can market yourself and you can grow a following and you can uh, connect with your audience and you can find clients, or you can go ahead and open a profile on a marketplace and start selling your products, right? So you want to utilize these social media platforms and these platforms that are available to you, such as Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, TikTok, all of those. And you can start showcasing your work. Now, through that, you will be able not only to show your work, which is already a big step for an artist. I know that many of us hold back from showing what we do, uh, but also you can engage with the online design and art community and also connect with the with the people that you can better help with your work. Now, in order to find you, they need to know that you exist. And for this, you want to do the following. So these are a few things that you can do to market yourself and to put yourself out there and to connect with people that will hire you or with which you can create collaborations. So the thing number one that I want you to do is to do client outreach. So, and I know this is a scary topic for many of you. I know it was a scary topic for me. I was wondering, okay, but how do I approach a complete stranger? How do I start? How do I even start that conversation? And, And I know that this is holding back many artists out there from connecting with their ideal clients and collaborators. So the first thing that I hear artists and graphic artists um, saying when I speak about client outreach is 
but I don't have a client base. How do I start? So you do have a client base or a client list at least. And for this, I want you to look into the people you already know. Look at your phone, check your contacts list on your phone. That is already a list of people that you can contact and work with and for. Check your Facebook account and all of the people that you're friend with on Facebook, you can contact them and initiate, initiate conversations with them. All of the people that you, that you follow or follow you on Instagram, all of the people that you're connected with on your, on your LinkedIn account, all of the people that you have access to, those are the people that you're going to start with. So I want you to go ahead and look for those people in your contact list, in, in your social media accounts and the people that you have connected with throughout the years. And this is going to be the first people that you're going to be doing client reach out with. Now, you will always want to start with your closest circle and that is family and friends because these are the people that already know you and that you know as well. And they first, they are more likely to hire you. Second, it is much more easier for you to connect with them because you don't feel that friction of like, okay, I'm, I'm talking to a complete stranger. You can go ahead and say like, Hey, I am looking for lettering work and I am open for assignments, right? And you can go ahead and connect them and tell them that you're available to create work for them. So those are the people your closest circle are the easiest people to contact, are the people that are more likely to hire you because they know you, they trust you, and, and is for you the easiest move to do first. Then you can move on to the next level. People that you, um, that are friends of friends or people that you have worked for uh, and with in the past, then you can start expanding your circle by asking for referrals from acquaintances and friends. Now, I already spoke about this framework, this three layered, uh, three layers framework that I use to do client outreach uh, on episode number 128. So you can go back to that. If you are wondering how to do client outreach, I think that episode is going to be helpful in terms of giving you and providing you this framework, which is a framework uh, that works a little bit like like a like an onion so you start with the inner circle which is your friends and family then you move on to the next circle which is acquaintances and then you move on to the next circle which is you know the big clients the people that you don't know and starting conversations with strangers and throughout all this process what you gain is experience confidence you gain a rhythm and also like a framework to approach clients and close deals. Uh, so if you're interested in, in client outreach, go back to the episode number 128 and, uh, and I will provide you with more insights there. So let's continue down the things that you can do to market yourself and to build your online presence and, and branding. So one of them is client outreach. You need to do client outreach. There's no way out. And the more you do, the easier it gets. The other thing that you can do is online and offline promotion. You can, of course, use social, social media platforms such as Instagram, Twitter, uh, Pinterest, TikTok uh, to showcase your work. Now, I want you to consider using other promotional methods because I see many artists and, and lettering artists and graphic artists focusing, overly focusing on social media, and I see them spending a fair amount of time in promoting themselves on social media without even understanding whether this is bringing any assignments their way, any results in terms of income. And I see that social media or overly focusing on social media as a promotion, uh, your sole promotion method could be a trap in terms of making you invest a lot of time into something that you don't know that is working. So yes, you can use social media platforms. I will always encourage you to have a social media presence. In fact, you need to have a social media presence. However, I want you to you consider using physical promotional material to create more direct connection with potential clients. And especially nowadays where the people is, are no longer used to this direct connection and this physical connection in a way, I would totally recommend you to use this method to stand out and become more memorable. So you can use, for instance, printed material or postcards or small printed things that you can send to potential clients and that could make a memorable impression. I have used this method 
for a long time and I continue to use it nowadays and I want to show you some of the of the printed material that I sent over the years. What I normally do is that I use the end of the year as the the one time of the year where I was surely sent something out like promotional material or, or post postcards. So I use this one event to make sure that I do it at least once a year. And there's other moments in the year where I would perhaps do client outreach through printed material. So the first, the very first card that I ever sent was this one. And for those that are watching on YouTube, you get to see the card. As you can see, there is, let me just put it closer to the camera. As you can see, it says, three, four, 13. And I always tell this story because I think it's cute. It says three, four, 13. And I sent this in the beginning of my career as a lettering artist. And what I, what I intended with this postcard or what it says in the back, it says something like, okay, you can write your three wishes for 2013 on this, on this card. So what I did with some clients is writing, writing or completing the card myself. For those that are listening, the card has a beautiful lettering in the front and below the lettering, there's like three blank spaces to write your wishes. And what I did for those clients that I wanted to work for or with, I wrote the wishes myself. So I wrote something like, okay, I want, I want to be happy. I want to travel the world. And then I want to work with you. And it really, the, you know, using this, this method to reach out to clients was really effective. I actually got a fair amount of responses considering that normally people don't respond to you, to a postcard that they receive. And in fact, this card or through this card, I met with my agent and I met also the creator of, uh, or not the creator, but the organizer of Creative Mornings who invited me to, to give a talk. And I met a few other clients. So I'm going to show you a couple of those. For those that are on YouTube, you will get to see some of the cards that I sent throughout the years. Some of them are more simple, some of them more complicated, but you know, th these are also for me, they were also for me opportunities to explore something, to use a certain material. For instance, this one that I'm showing here is one of my favorites. It's like laser cut. And I use this as a template to spray the, the envelopes in which I sent this. So I think it's pretty genius. <laughs> and these are more recent. I, in the last years, I have been doing like a VIP golden card that I sent to clients and students of my academy. And yes, and the idea with these cards is just to make a lasting impression. And I think having something physical that you can then follow up after with an email, reminding them of that card that they received, it makes the whole, it closes the circle. So I would totally recommend be, beyond having a social media presence, to have some printing material that you can hand in at events. And this leads me to the next point, which is networking. And this is important to fold. First, to connect with other local graphic artists and designers, as well as connecting with potential clients. As I mentioned before in previous episodes, I spoke about the importance of showing the artist behind the work and the, the creator behind the work. And I think that showing up to events is a way of doing that because people like to work with people. And especially nowadays where everything is so remote and we don't come together so often. So they are, people are more likely to hire someone that they already know or that, that they have seen once. So consider going to networking events and starting conversations, connect with people. You don't necessarily have to pitch your services to every person you know, but you can connect with them. And later down the road, the, if they know you, they are more likely to connect with you or to contact you to work with you. Another thing that you can do is to update your portfolio. And as silly as it sounds, so many artists don't update their portfolio. So make sure that you keep your portfolio updated with fresh work so that people can find you. And of course, your beautiful work. If you don't show how active you are as an artist and you don't update your portfolio with, with new work, people won't know how, how much you're growing and how much your work is growing, growing. Now, client outreach and promoting your work are not things that you do once and forget about. And I want to highlight this client outreach and promoting your work is something is an ongoing task. 
Yes, and they never stop. You need to become an advocate for your own work and for your own prof profile as an artist. So remember, have a social media presence for sure, but don't overly focus on that. You can also have some sort of physical material, promotional material that you can send over to people, which creates another level of connection. Go to events, show up, show your face. People want to see you. People want to work with real people. And by showing up to events, you will create that kind of connection. And number four, keep your portfolio updated. Don't forget to include your newest work on your portfolio so that people can find you and your beautiful work. So I hope you found this episode about branding and marketing yourself useful. Thank you so much for joining on today's episode and see you on the next episode of Open Studio. Bye bye. So this is it. I hope you love this episode. You can find me, the host of the show on social networks at Martina Flor on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. If you have a question or comments, go to martinaflor.com slash podcast where you can see previous episodes, find show notes and send voice memos with your comments and questions. You can also watch these episodes on YouTube. Just go to martinaflor.com slash YouTube to find them. You can, of course, listen to all our episodes on your favorite podcast platform. If you loved this episode, subscribe to this podcast. And if you leave us a review, it will help others find us. Thank you all for listening and see you in the next episode of Martina Flor's Open Studio. Bye-bye.